Hi, I'm Bill Green. I've been working with and thinking about ways that communities can use trust as a superpower to build community wealth for over 20 years and starting community businesses too. Mutual Credit Services is a broad collaboration of people who've come together to build working platforms to do this for business networks of all kinds, simply and effectively. This talk is particularly related to what are known as community businesses, a very broad definition that brings together everything from co-ops to social enterprises to community focused charities. So we'll start with a simple overview of community business finance. There's the community business, the pink arrow is the funding, the grants, loans, community shares, whatever it is that gets the business started and which fund its development. The big red arrow is the majority of the business expenditure. This goes outside the community that the business serves. In typical uh, setup, that's much larger than the green arrows at the bottom, the financial flows which circulate between the business and the community which it serves. These are typically rather a small proportion of the total. Even the wages that the community business might pay to its workers who might live in the community don't typically result in any uh, feedback in terms of income for the community business. So this is uh, a typical picture and there'll obviously be a wide variety of different specifics, but this is what we see in general. So community businesses increasingly come together in networks of one kind or another. Again, these networks provide a variety of soft support. They do things like shared learning, shared communications, lobbying power, marketing. They might work together on grant applications and uh, in other contexts. It's rare though for there to be much in the way of direct financial interaction. This is certainly not part of the business model of most community businesses. And of course, all the financial transactions of all these organizations are mediated by the banks. And as we know, the way the banks work is to extract as much money as they can from the financial flows they manage. That's just their business model. Financially speaking, community businesses are thus relatively financially isolated in a system mediated by banks who generally are not that interested in community business. Uh, many community businesses are there in order indeed to mitigate the circumstances which are arguably uh, brought into being by the way that the banks and the financial system works. The trust and solidarity networks, the, the yellow dotted lines on this drawing um, can, of course, offer advice and support in how each business community business manages its relationships with money. But there are no direct financial tools or mechanisms inside these networks, which help the individual businesses achieve better financial outcomes and circumstances. Let's see if we can imagine how that might change. So here is a simplified picture of the financial outlook for a community business over a month. From the top part of the diagram and the overall balance uh, at the end of the month, we can see that there's a projected surplus. Hooray. We can predict this, the business can predict this because many outgoings and receipts are paid under some version of trade credit terms, 14 days to pay, 30 days to pay, even wages are paid in arrears. So that it's possible for a business to be reasonably confident over the short term, the next month, what its financial position is going to be. When we look at the graph at the bottom of the chart, which uh, looks at an imagined uh, arrangement of days across the month with different payments falling due on different days and different income uh, arriving on different days, we can see that daily payments in and out are uh, much more varied 
and despite the month ending with a surplus it's perfectly possible for there to be troubling days for the business during that month and these troubling days are um, damaging to the business maybe a supplier has to be annoyed because they get paid late or maybe an opportunity to uh, take up some business is missed or maybe charges are incurred and all this despite the fact that the business can predict reasonably confidently that it's going to end the month with a surplus if the bank trusted that forecast maybe the bank would allow the business to have a temporary credit line in that uh, troubling four days in the middle of the month but we all know that banks don't really work like that um, the chances of even getting an interview to discuss this projected problem uh, within a month are relatively low and organizing uh, such a temporary credit line takes a long time and often comes with a fee attached which might be larger than the cost of just putting up with the problem. If the bank itself could see all of the credits and debits that the business forecaster can see, maybe the bank could even add them all up and simply ask for one payment to be made at, for the whole month um, and simplify everything, eliminate that problem patch in the middle of the month. But of course, the bank isn't likely to do that because it's their business model for companies to rack up charges and um, to charge us for that covering finance. So if that was to change, what might happen? Let's imagine now that the community business network, as well as soft social uh, support, has some intertrading relationships, the green arrows on this graph. And these businesses are connected together somehow by trade. And let's further imagine that that trade is not mediated by the banks, but by a shared ledger, a record of all the invoices issued, payments received within that network, not in general, but just between the members of that network. And that that ledger is owned by and operated for the benefit of those members. That's this little green ledger book, accounts book that's shown on all the arrows. What this means is that any one moment, just as with a bank, each business has a balance in respect of that mutual ledger. This balance adds up not just its payments, but its outstanding debits and credits. To give a single number, the aggregate figure that the business either owes to or is owed by the rest of the network. So let's look at that business dashboard again, if this was true, if we had this mutual ledger in place. And let's assume two things. Let's assume that around 20% of this business's trade takes place through the mutual ledger. And that trade across the mutual ledger is roughly balanced. So that across a month, the same amount goes in as out of the business across the ledger. So the bank account is still in operation, still taking 80% of the business's trade. Uh, but within that mutual business ledger, there's a rough balance. And that's fine because trade in the network is about the value created by trade, not about making money. So every time a trade happens, of course, one partner receive some value, some, you know, some goods that it didn't have before, some services it didn't have before. And so you can see that if trade in the network produces value roughly in equal measure for all the members, um, but no profit is made, actually everybody in the network is better off at the end of the period without there having been any net change in their financial position. The point is 
money does good when it changes hands, not sitting there in a pile. So nothing magical has happened. The final balance of the business is still a thousand overall up from the beginning. All of the uh, transactions that were going to happen to that business across the month have happened on exactly the same day that they were going to happen. Look at the cash flow chart at the bottom though. The gray bars are what happened before when all the trade was mediated by the bank, but the green bars are what the bank balance looks like now. Remember with 20% of the trade of each day taken off, put into the mutual ledger and what's called netted off, it balances. The cash flow of that business in the bank has lower highs, but it also crucially has less serious lows. The crunch period in the middle of the month where the business was at its credit limit at the bank and simply couldn't spend any more money or was maybe incurring uh, significant charges is ironed out roughly that negative position is roughly halved. Even though, as we say, the picture at the end of the month is exactly the same. Every single payment has been made on the same day and in the same amount. So we can see that that mutual trade uh, in an agreed internal accounting unit, which is what that mutual ledger uses, can significantly improve a business's cash flow. But before you get too excited, there are some questions that need to be asked. And the answers may not be quite as encouraging as uh, we hope. First of all, what trading relationships are possible within this network? Are there any at all? Are they at all balanced? And what proportion of the overall trade of member businesses might they add up to? And what we see here is that exact same network, but with weaker trading links, whether that's in terms of volume or um, uh, purpose, you know, have you got anything that this other business wants to buy or have they got anything that you want to buy? So these are these have been grayed out, they're much weaker. And so we can see that actually in a network here, we might end up with this CAC on the right, having an imbalance of trade coming in. It doesn't seem to really want to buy very much from other businesses um, and other members of the network might end up with a net negative. And in a small network of businesses, particularly community businesses who are focused on the communities that they serve, this is very often going to be true. So we have a possible mechanism which can improve the cash flow of a business, but not necessarily a context which would make that mechanism really sing. So what we would need to do to sort this thing out, sort this problem out, is to try and improve the context of the network of community businesses. The idea that we can go quickly from a condition where community businesses have not that much into trade, which is the current condition, to a healthy 20%, which also balances neatly, without a fair amount of thought and um, commitment is what I call magical thinking. Um, it just won't happen without effort and concentration. But there are ways forward. Groups um, within the community business sector are already working on inter-trade networks, um, particularly in the food sector. Uh, we're working with a company called Tamar Grow Local who are looking to inter-trade with other local food businesses uh, to allow specialist suppliers in one area to trade across their network and supply more uh, retail customers across a wider area across this network of food aggregator businesses. And so most of the trade in that network will be inter-trade. These businesses are doing uh, real business with each other 
backwards and forwards. So there's both volume and balance in prospect there. Groups like this, once those they're established, can look to expand those networks sideways to look at service businesses which uh, might support, say, food producers, agricultural contractors, accountants who specialize in agricultural firms, marketing consultants, these sort of service businesses. So there is a way for community business networks to build themselves with this idea of intertrade in place from the start. But most existing community business networks, like the Community Business uh, Mutual Alliance, which this presentation was originally developed for, are based around the idea of those soft solidarity links that we showed in earlier slides. And for those organizations, the idea of developing trade uh, has to be layered on to the original purpose of the networks and would need to be intentionally developed. And in those contexts, what seems to us to be the most uh, valuable idea is to look to develop a community business service sector or in the context of another business network, um, any service sector. And the reason for this is that service businesses tend to have um, goods, services uh, that many, many businesses need. So if you're an accountant, you can obviously be an accountant for all types of business, uh, whether they're serving retail customers or whether they're um, cleaning companies or you know all sorts of different businesses use accountants in very much the same way. Um, printers, marketing companies, there's a whole host of service businesses which could offer services to a wide range of businesses in a network. And of course, those service businesses each need services of other businesses. A cleaning company needs an accountant, an accounting company needs a cleaner. So that what you can begin to build is a, uh, a trading network that has good interconnection and reasonable hopes of balanced trade. And once you begin to achieve this, then the benefits that we showed back on the business dashboard to each member can begin to come true. Of course, to really develop a service sector inside a particular business network, uh, it may be possible to invite a business in. So for instance, a business network to go and invite um, a number of accountants to um, interview almost for a position as a member of that network to serve some agreed number of members of that network and thus fulfill that interconnecting role in the network that allows the circularity of trade, which is the technical term we describe this uh, condition whereby trade balances reasonably well across a network and most businesses are connected both in terms of buying and in terms of selling circularity of trade is what we're aiming for and what these services businesses are there to provide. So you could invite businesses in, but also you could potentially as a group of businesses say, oh, all of us need cleaners, but we can't find a local cleaning business that is suitable that we can all agree on to invite in as a member. Maybe in those circumstances, it might be worth all of the businesses together investing, um, possibly not money, but certainly uh, future guarantees of business to people from the communities that they serve who could set up a cleaning business. And this could really be a route to developing what we call community wealth in whatever community that is, but the community served by the business network. <clears throat> and at Mutual Credit Services, we're also 
developing and have experience in other models of investment which could support these sort of initiatives but that's for another talk uh, and indeed there's a great deal more I could say about all of this but what we are really looking for uh, is existing networks of businesses or networks of businesses that are coming together who already have an idea that they would like to try and see if the sort of benefits that we've been talking about can be developed in their network. And at Mutual Credit Services, we work with such communities. We don't have ready-made uh, solutions that we try and sell, but we have a lot of skills, a lot of tools, a lot of frameworks, um, financial, legal governance that we can uh, refine to fit particular contexts and um, particular scales of operation. And we do this alongside the networks of businesses that are interested in accruing the sort of benefits we've showed. So if you're interested, please do get in touch. And here are some details that will help you do so. Thanks very much for listening. I hope this has been useful.